I don't, I don't know what to say about the border numbers. We have a 674% increase from last year. That number, this border security situation is going from bad to worse. Joining me now, Sheriff David Clark from Milwaukee, also author of Cop Under Fire, Moving Beyond the Hashtags of Race, Crime, and Politics for a Better America. Sheriff, I don't, I don't know what to say about the border numbers. We have a 674% increase from last year. That number's so big it boggles the mind. I have people down there on the border tell me we're on pace for three million this year. Sheriff, this is gonna collapse the country. No nation can withstand this. Well, that's what the Democrats have in mind. That's what they want to do. Look, the border was pretty much close to fixed under President Trump. I have visited the border five times over the last couple of years, three different sectors along the border. I've talked to ranchers. I've talked to people who live along the border and they tell me about the, uh, uh, the problems with people flooding across, coming out of their property, burglarizing it, stealing things along the way, uh, on their way up uh, north. So, you know, when you, when you listen to these people who have to live with this every day, you get a little dis- different perspective. I think that's why uh, Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden don't want to go to the border. They don't want to deal with the reality and the truth. Sheriff, how long till it hits the rest of the country? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure people on the right, most of the right kind of care, or at least will give lip service to it, but not a significant enough portion of the country is mad about this to do anything. How bad does it have to get? You know, that's usually the way the federal government works. Things have to crash. There has to be a crisis. Look, there was a crisis when President Trump uh, took over as as the um, president of the United States, and he went right to work. It was one of the biggest things on his platform was to seal the border. It was because that's what the American people wanted. So, you know, if you think about it, the political class, and it's both parties, all right? Let's not, uh, let's not kid ourselves here. And here's an example. The president of the United States, Trump, had to declare the border a national emergency in order to get funds to complete sections of the wall, to build new sections of the wall, because the Congress would not approve it. And that was the Congress under um, Republican control. President Trump asked them, he said, get me an immigration bill that includes these four points. And he laid the four points out. I thought the points were reasonable, at least open for discussion. The GOP Congress, we're talking John Boehner, we're talking uh, Paul Ryan, did nothing. So the president had to be creative in declaring this national emergency, which meant that he could use funds from other area of the Defense Department to secure our southern border. That's how difficult it was for the president, but he got it done nonetheless. And then Joe Biden comes along, and with a few stupid moves, He undoes the good work that was being done at the time, and he created a new crisis. What are the stupid moves? Well, you know, originally, uh, he didn't fund the Border Patrol, changed the policies, and reinstituted catch and release, all of those things that that assisted the government. Uh, So now you have these, you know, at the time, and and even now you have drugs pouring across the border, you have illegal sex trafficking. I mean, there's three reasons why you need to have uh, border security. The first one is you have domestic and national security threats. You have terrorists coming over, you have MS-13, and they're just walking across the border. The second reason you need to have effective border uh, protection is to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. I cannot believe during a pandemic that Joe Biden, would allow the border to be open, people coming in from outside the United States, no testing, we don't know who these people are, potentially spreading the uh, coronavirus. The third reason why you need to have effective border protection is you have to control the influx of another country's 'er ne'er-do-wells. Look, the people that are coming across the United States, some of them may be good people, but the fact is they don't have job skills, They don't have uh, anything to offer an employer. There's a language barrier. They're bringing their kids that are going to flood our K-12 public school systems that don't have the money. They don't have bilingual programs, and to institute these would cost a lot of money. That's why you need to control the influx of another country's 'er ne'er-do-wells. None of that right now is being done. 
Sheriff, can you explain why, because you're 100% right about Republican leadership failing to do anything or even appear to want to do anything about illegal immigration, but why? I mean, it's such, there's such a gap. I mean, the Republican base wants something done. The Republican leadership very much does not. Why? Politics, all right? Uh, the, 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 we, you know, the Democrats are real clear uh, about what they're trying to accomplish here with open borders. That's what they support. Republicans... And, 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 you know, just as a class, uh, they pay lip service, all right? It, it sounds good at election time, right? It makes good sound bites. Some of them are sincere. There's no doubt about it. But let's be honest. Both sides benefit from some of this because they're, they're, they're especially on the, on the Republican side, you know, they're worried about the Hispanic vote. Well, guess what? It's been polled among Hispanics who have come here illegally, who have come here the right way, they favor closing that damn border, but the Republicans are still afraid that it might hurt them politically. You know, it's all politics instead of what's in the best interest of United States citizens. Sheriff, I'm looking at some numbers for 2021 as far as homicide in the cities go. I mean, I mean, a 533% increase in Portland, New York, 48%, Minneapolis, 236%. It's not like American cities were doing great before. These are, these are third world numbers. Those things are staggering. You know, I've been in law enforcement for a long time. I spent 40 years. I worked homicide. I've seen blood guts. I've seen some of the ugliest things that you could see, uh, infants that were murdered, things like that. So not a lot phases me because I've seen it. I'm not saying I don't care, but these numbers are staggering. And let's be honest too, when you drill down into those numbers, the overwhelming majority of those victims of homicide are black and the perpetrators are black. That's the dirty little secret here that the Democrats, and most of this is happening in the cities you mentioned, are all run by liberal Democrats, Chicago, Minneapolis, Portland, Seattle, New York, Milwaukee, where I'm at, all run by liberal Democrats, and it's their failed urban policies that are contributing to this. I predicted this five years ago with this war on police. I said it was going to cause police to back off. They're not going to be as aggressive as we need them to be, and that's how you stem the tide of of uh, crime and violence because you take away the opportunities. Police presence matters. These departments now are having their budgets cut. You have retirements and resignations. They can't keep the positions filled. That's why you're seeing this uptick. Plus, with these failed urban policies like bail reform with no bail and letting people out of jail, the criminal is no longer afraid that someone will hold them accountable for their illegal behavior. Sheriff, even even a Democrat uh, doesn't want his city to turn into a wasteland, right? I mean, even, even Bill de Blasio, who I think is a world-class scumbag, he surely doesn't want New York City to turn into escape from New York, or does he? Uh, sure, because again, it's lip service. It's politicians are speaking out of both sides of their mouth. All he had to do was continue the policies of his predecessors. Michael Bloomberg, who's no staunch conservative, and then a Rudy Giuliani. That's all they had to do. You had record low crime in New York City. So for de Blasio to sit up there or for someone to say, well, you know, he really cares and he doesn't want this, then go back to the policies that work. Otherwise, what he's doing, he's pandering. He's pandering to the soft on crime Democrats. He's pandering to the coddlers of criminal behavior. And then at the same time, you know, he comes out and, and, and he'll say something that'll make you seem like he gets it. He, he knows what he's doing here. He's, this isn't ignorance. This is malfeasance. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me. Thanks.